Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. Excited to have you joining us as we continue our look at the book of Matthew, uh, diving into the life of Jesus, his teaching, the events surrounding his life, and what we can learn from it. And uh, I'm excited to dive in. Matthew chapter 3, we're going to be talking about baptism today. And uh, baptism is something that is is central to the Christian uh, life and, and to our teaching and practices. And so we get to dive in a little bit. Hey, what do we believe about baptism? How do we get to that place? Uh, and what's Jesus' interaction with it? So with that, let's dive in. Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 13 through 17. If you want to pause the video, follow along in your own Bible or Bible app, you can do that right now. And we'll continue. Verse 13 says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, A voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. So we see Jesus uh, getting baptized himself. What I want to do is is say, okay, what do we, what do we need to take away? What are some, some key things to understand from this passage? But then what do we believe about baptism? So kind of a a two-parter today. uh, So maybe get a refill on your coffee. We might be here for uh, a minute or two longer than normal. But a couple of things we first see here is we see, uh, a transition from the the baptism that John had been doing to what Jesus was establishing. See, uh, John, as as you read the Gospels, we see that John, uh, who is referred to as John the Baptist, because that's what he did, he came preaching and proclaiming the coming of the Messiah, and Scripture says uh, preaching a baptism of repentance. So this was a a repentant act, kind of uh, an assumption that, hey, as you got baptized, that was you repenting of sins, kind of being cleansed from that and saying, hey, I want to walk in in kind of a, a new obedience to Jesus and, and, and walking in faith to him. So is that an outward act of repentance? Now, if that seems a little inconsistent with what you've heard taught about baptism for us today, it's because it is. That Jesus, he comes here not needing to repent of anything. We believe that Jesus was a perfect, sinless son of God and savior of the world. He had no sins to repent of, which is why John here pushes back. He says, whoa, I, I need to be baptized by you, and and you want me to baptize you? Because he understands that here's the Messiah. He doesn't need to repent of anything. He has no sin in his life. But what Jesus was doing here is first he's modeling the humility of saying, hey, I'm I'm not coming here to be uh, the the person with which you all need to serve, but I'm coming to serve others. It's that, that indicator early on in his ministry that he understood his mission here was to come and sacrifice for us and pay the price for our sins. Uh, it's that early indicator of him saying, hey, my mission here is to take on the sins of the world. Um, but I also believe this to be a transition of, of baptism being that repentant act to being a declarative act. And we'll get back to that in just a minute. Um, But the other important thing here is what this teaches us about God and his nature. And see, at the end, as as Jesus is raised out of the water, we get that picture of all three members of the Trinity being expressed there. You have Jesus, who is in the water being baptized by John the Baptist. You have the Holy Spirit being represented by the dove coming down from heaven, and God himself speaking and saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. All three members of the Trinity are expressed there. Because, see, we believe that, that we worship one God who has eternally existed and, and revealed in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and this is a, a complex and difficult topic for us because we have no framework aside from the physical world that we live in of how to understand that. And so there's all kinds of uh, examples and analogies and four-leaf clovers and, and relationships, and he's like an egg and all these things, and, and frankly, they all fall short. And this passage specifically reveals truth that that, that counteracts some heresies that have existed. So again, I'm going to dive in real quick here. There's some some heresies, some false teachings that existed uh, and have been perpetuated throughout history about the nature of our triune God. And the first that is most clearly defeated in this passage of Scripture is called modalism. 
where God exists in three different modes. The, the most normal way that this is presented is that, that God exists in the Old Testament as the Father. He exists in, in the gospel period of history in the New Testament as the Son, and then he transitions and becomes the Holy Spirit after the act of Pentecost. Uh, and that, okay, there, there's three different stages to his existence. I mean, that's clearly a heresy because you have all three of them being represented right here. We don't believe that God moves from one nature to another, but he's eternally existed in all three persons. Uh, another popular heresy is called Arianism, which represents the, that teaches that Jesus really isn't divine. He's not the son of God. He's a, he's a, a high teacher. He's someone chosen by God, uh, someone created by God, but not really a, a divine son of God. And that's very clearly uh, denounced here by the very words of God himself, spoken from heaven, declaring the nature of Jesus being his son. Um, there's other uh, heresies like partialism, which says, oh, each, each member of the Trinity is one third of uh, God, but all of them are 100% God, 100% divine in that. And, and this is important to us because it's so easy to get off and to, to lose the, the, the majesty and the wonder of the fact that, that our God is, is big. Our God can't be condensed to some cheesy analogy about four-leaf clovers, or in this case, three-leaf clovers, or, or, or different uh, aspects like that. But we worship a God that is bigger than our uh, human comprehension, and I want it to be that way. I don't want it to be some, such that, that God is easy to understand in a sense that, oh, well, it's just this way and this way. I want there to be some wonder and majesty and like, man, isn't God amazing and big and powerful and, and spectacular? And because of that, he's worthy of our worship. So that's some things that we see from that. But what about baptism? Because here we're, we're given baptism. What do we believe about baptism? Here at Calvary, you know that we get excited about baptism. We've got a lake baptism coming up on September 10th. If you're interested in getting in on that, uh, anytime we say that there is water and a crowd and a profession of faith, we will baptize you. So what do we believe about baptism? Well, as it's modeled here. We believe that, uh, that baptism is an outward de declaration of our inward decision to follow Jesus. By that, we mean, hey, this doesn't save you. It's just water. It's just lake water or tap water or pool water or wherever you find yourself. Um, but what we believe is that as you are lowered into that water, you're declaring outwardly with your life the, the decision you've already made inwardly to say, I believe in Jesus. I want to give him my life and follow him and walk in obedience every day uh, that he gives me to draw breath. I'm going to walk with him. This is your sure way to tell the world. And so with that, some things that we understand. First, we understand that this is a, an instruction given to us. Uh, this is something that is instructed for all believers after they make that choice of believing in Jesus and walking in faith, get baptized as that outward declaration. We already said it doesn't save us, Jesus saves us. It's not the water, but Jesus. Uh, the other thing is it's demonstrated by us saying, hey, I'm putting my old life to death. Uh, some of us pastors we baptize will say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with him in death and risen to walk in newness of life. Because we say, hey, your old life of sin and rebellion and living for yourself or living for the world is being put to death as you lower into the water. But you've got a new life in Jesus. 1 Corinthians 5, 17 said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. And finally, the last thing about baptism is we see that it aligns us with this, uh, this movement of faith. It aligns us with Jesus. Jesus himself was baptized and modeled that. So we get to say, hey, I'm doing something that Jesus has done. We align ourselves with other believers who have been baptized. They say, hey, we're joining in this together as a shared experience. We're also saying, hey, I, I, I'm joining a body of believers in a church. If you get baptized here at Calvary, you're saying, hey, I'm part of this family, part of this local community of faith here. Um, so all of that to say, hey, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and Savior of the world, and you've given your life to follow him, have you been baptized? If you've not made that outward declaration of your inward decision to follow Jesus, reach out and let us know. You can sign up on our website if you're local to Lake Havasu or close enough to drive in to get baptized at the lake on September 10th. Or let us know anytime uh, there's a service, uh, we'd love to schedule that. If you've got questions, reach out to us. We'd love to help walk you through that, explain further where you've got questions, and help you take that step of obedience. But hope you have a great day, Calvary, and we'll see you next time.